Hello, God bless you. Welcome to Daily Bread and Water, where we take a daily look at the Bible verse, because just like we need physical food and water for our physical bodies, we also need spiritual bread and water for our spiritual bodies. Jesus says that we cannot live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. When we get hungry, we eat, but we also need to make time to feed our spiritual bodies. And we do that by reading the Bible, whether it be a physical copy of the Bible, free Bible app, read through a website. We gotta read God's Word, spend some time with Him, get along with Him. We just give me an appetizer here at Daily Bread and Water, a verse of the day, with some discussions and hope. And it will leave to you to open your Bible, finishing the meal, reading the verses before and after. It's so important to as we see the day approaching and all the deception coming on in this world, it's so important to read the Bible for yourself, to know what the Word of God says. We're going to be in the book of Psalms today, 118 verse 28. Thou art my God, and I will praise thee. Thou art my God, and I will exalt thee. You know, we serve a good God. You know, over the past month or so, I've been giving you scriptures, hoping that you will see that whatever you are facing in this world, whatever struggles you may be having, run to God with it. Don't run to God first, not last. Trust God with whatever you're going through. Because we serve a good God who loves us so very much that like a father, like a parent, he only wants the best for us. Loves us so much that he came to this earth just to die for us. He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be exalted, lifted up. Because he's so good, he loves us so very much. He is our God. And He does so much for us. If, if nothing else, He did nothing else but give us our salvation would be enough. Because you see what the good news is, is that God came to this earth. He, God the Son, Jesus Christ, left His throne in heaven, lived a perfect sinless life, was fully God, fully man, died a brutal death on the cross. Why? Because he knew that we are sinners, which means we break God's laws in thought and deed, which means any thoughts and actions that we have break God's laws. And that's sin. The Bible says that the wit that for all of sin, sin and come short of the glory of God. There's none of us that are righteous, not one. That means that none of us are perfect. And the wages of sin is death. But the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So just like in the law of lands, we break a law, we go to jail. We broke God's laws. And it's like we're about to go to jail. But Jesus steps in and goes to jail in our place. Jesus took God's wrath on himself. You see, just like being in quicksand, Jesus knew that we could not do this on our own. We couldn't be a good enough person. We couldn't give enough money. Whatever you think may make you a good person, you can never be good enough to earn your salvation. If we could earn just a little bit of our salvation by our works, by our deeds, that Jesus wouldn't have had to come. But just like when we're stuck in quicksand, the more we try to get ourselves out, the more we sink deeper and deeper. We need someone to pull us out. And that's what Jesus did. He pulled us out when he died on that cross. And his blood 
covered our sins because without the shedding of blood there's no remission of sins his blood covered our sins paid the price for our sins just like an animal sacrifice did, did in the Old Testament that animal had to be without spot without blemish perfect in every way but it was a temporary fix just when they mess up they had to offer another animal Jesus was the perfect sacrifice that paid for the sins of everyone living in his day on to today and on to the end of the world his sacrifice was that perfect and he redeemed us brought us back to him we were a slave to sin but Jesus bought us Paid the price for our slavery. That's when he redeemed us. And he put his righteousness on us. So now when Father God looks at us, he doesn't see the person who messes up, who was a, a slave to sin. He sees his son who freed us. He was laid in the tomb for three days and three nights. And then he rose from the dead because death and the grave had no power over him. And he ascended back up to heaven, back to his throne, where he is, intercedes for us. He is our defense attorney. Satan is the accuser of the brethren, so he accuses the brethren day and night. He is our prosecutor, and day and night he tells God all that we do that messes up. That's against God. He says, look what they did today. But Jesus says, it's forgiven, it's stricken from the record. I paid for it with my blood. I bought them back. So he bought us from this bondage of slavery from sin. But you see, the thing is, we have to, you know, it, it's like when Moses told the children of Israel, when God said, tell them to put the blood on the doorposts and to not leave the house. That's the same thing for us. You see, when Jesus re redeems us, buys us back to him, we end up, we repent of our sins. That means we have a change of heart. We change our mind. We can't say a sinner's prayer and then go on living our sins and doing what we want to do. Because if we're truly saved, we won't even want to do those sins. Yeah, we'll mess up. But we won't want to. But a lot of people, they will step out of that house. Even though God said, stay in, stay in, the, stay in the house where the blood is covered on the doorpost and they'll still want to continue doing their sins thinking well I'm good because I said a prayer and I can live what I want do what I want just like when you drink alcohol it can mess with your liver you smoke cigarettes or any type of tobacco it can destroy your lungs if you do some type of drugs different types of drugs they can do things to your body that's the same thing with if we continue on our sin we just continue to say well I'm good I said a sinner's prayer I could still live what I want and do what I want to do you want you don't you wouldn't want to do what you want what you used to do you want to live for God and not for yourself And one thing we have to do while we're on this earth is once once we're saved, just like the, the story the story of the talents, the parable of the talents, we want to share Jesus with people. Jesus says, Go and make disciples of the, the nations. Go to the other most parts of the earth. He didn't say, Hide in your house and thank God that you're saved until the rapture comes now he said tell people about me 
And that's what we're called to do. When we come to sing on Jesus Christ, we have an antidote. Because the rest of the world is a slave to sin. And we have the, the way to escape. The way to be free. We have the antidote. It's like sin is a cancer. Killing us. We have the antidote. We should want to share it with people. And as we see the day approaching, we should want as many to go with us as we can. That's why we share the gospel. We share the word of God. And we share the gospel. Because for those who have not called on the name of the Lord, we want to give them the opportunity to know who Jesus is and what he did for them and how they can have him in their life. Because Jesus is coming soon. His return is imminent. We see everything going on in this world right now. The train derailments, the thoughts of nuclear war. I mean, since the Turkey and Syria earthquake, it just seems like earthquakes and different natural disasters are just ramping up. One thing I don't hear watchmen talk about at all is I've heard on the news almost weekly now of, tra of planes almost wreck wrecking into each other when one's coming to the airport and the other one's leaving. There's been several near misses. So much going on in this world. So much evil. I mean, just the world is rocking and rolling. Really. And I don't know how much more the world can take. you got these people who believe in this global warming thing. And tell me how the earth's heating up. Well, we can see all that's going on in the world, and we got to wonder how much world can, how much more can the world take? I mean, there's just so much going on. I mean, all the food distribution plants being destroyed. We're seeing the price of food going up. We're seeing shelves being empty. People are struggling to pay their bills, to pay their rent to pay their car payment, to keep their lights on. They're struggling to put food on the table. And we're, the shadow of the tribulation is just overcasting us so much. And soon, soon that trumpet's going to sound. Jesus' return is imminent. Nothing has to happen for that trumpet to sound. And I want I want to share the gospel with people. And I pray that you do too, that we take as many with us as we can. So if you don't know Jesus today, today is the perfect opportunity. Do not wait till you get a time in your life where you're financially secure, where you quit a sin or a, or a vice or a an addiction, go to him now. He will help you with your addiction. With He will help you to be more financially secure or whatever it may be. Come to him now. Don't wait till you overcome something. He will help you through it. Because he loves you. Because like I said, he's like a parent, a parent who only wants the best for their child. That's all he wants for us. So whatever you're seeking, he will help you through because he loves you. So it's ABC simple. All you got to do is admit you're a sinner in need of a Savior. Admit that you can't do this on your own. Admit that you need Jesus. Believe in your heart that Jesus is who he says he was. Believe that Jesus died for your sins and was buried. And God raised him from the dead. Believe that Jesus prayed the price for you delivered you from the bondage of sin. Believe that Jesus did it all for you. Because Jesus did it all for you. 
He didn't. He loved you so much that even if you rejected him, he still died for you. He still loved you that much. See us for call or confess. Call in the name of the Lord. Confess that Jesus is the Son of God. Confess that Jesus is Lord. Confess and repent of your sins. Repent means to turn away, have a change of heart. Do a 180. Make a U-turn. Here's a sample prayer you can pray. The words do not matter. You can say these words or whatever. This is just a template, a sample. But you can know who God is in your mind. You can say every word on the screen. You can deceive your friends, your family, your church, your pastor. You can deceive me. But you cannot deceive God. God knows the innermost thoughts that you have. If you are not sincere in crying out to the Lord, He will know. The Bible says if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is the Lord, you will be saved. So you can so you can say the words out loud, you can say words in your under your breath. You have to believe in your heart. And these words here, they don't matter. You can say these words, or you can say something from just from you speak from your heart. But you just have to believe from your heart who Jesus is and what he done for you. You know, I pray you got something out of this message today. If you did, give God glory. I can't wait to see what the Lord has for us tomorrow. I love you. Jesus loves you. Can't wait to see what the Lord has for us tomorrow. We'll see you tomorrow. Or hopefully we'll see you in the clouds because Jesus' return is imminent. And today will be a perfect day.